inside the Niger Delta. The Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs recently reeled out its achievements in the development of the backward Niger Delta region at a public forum in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, claiming that it had surpassed the people's expectations in transforming their lives. In responding to this claim, however, some Niger Deltans insist that there is no substantial evidence to suggest that the federal government's policies have had any positive impact on their lives. Correspondent Chika Abudozie tells us more. The many interventions showcased by the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs were narrowed to three broad areas of infrastructural upgrade, human capacity development and economic empowerment for communities in the Niger Delta. Immediate past Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Pastor Usani Uguru Usani, observed that the presentation was made to highlight the Ministry's efforts at transforming the socio-economic and political landscape of the Niger Delta at a time the region was enveloped by insecurity. We have carried out erosion control in several locations of the Niger Delta region. We have also carried out motorized uh, water, water schemes, solar boreholes reticulated some distance away from the point of drill so that the communities can benefit from them. In all this, I can tell you, we have not done this without any challenges. As far as the mandate is concerned and the provisions are made for its function, or for the, fun for the function of the ministry, it is a continuous program since it has taken off. We are all aware of the state of these projects in the past, but we have taken upon ourselves a policy in tandem with the policy of the central administration that we are not going to allow any abandoned project. With regards to the development of infrastructure, the Niger Delta Ministry, under the leadership of Pastor Usani, said it had completed the dualization of Section 1 of the East-West Road, which covers Kayama in Bayelsa State and Wari in Delta State. On Sections 2 to 4, we said the work is in progress. We received approval from the Federal Executive Council for the bypass between Eket and Orom to remedy the default in technical design, which had earlier committed the community of Eket City to be traversed at the center by this road. And it is envisaged that economically and socially, it will be too expensive for the people in that community. And so the advice of a bypass was muted the design has been approved and the award of contract has also been approved and the agreement will be signed any moment from now. This intervention, it said, was in addition to the rolling out of capacity building programs in agriculture and information communication technology. We have carried out interventions in virtually all sectors of the economy or society under our mandate as a ministry, given the instrumentality of the establishment of the ministry. And that is why we have enhanced some of the communities in the agri subsector, what I would call household economic enhancement by training and empowerment through starter parks of modern education tending digital by ICT. And that has enabled us to provide some ICT centers equipped with pieces for secondary school students. We have also established some health centers fully equipped with beds for patients, in other words, inpatient health centers. In the area of agriculture, we've established cassava processing. We call them cassava processing plants, but definitely and really, they produce such other byproducts as starch. As the immediate past Minister of Niger Delta Affairs had observed, developing the Niger Delta has become an uphill task on account of widespread insecurity, which is fueled by the people's perceived socio-economic alienation in the region. In stemming the tide of insecurity in the Delta, Professor Charles Dokubo, coordinator of the Presidential Amnesty Program, had hinted that the federal government's renewed strategy was beginning to yield fruitful results. Those in the Niger Delta who are in the kids now have benefits of amnesty program. Those who have children that could not afford to uh, send their children to 
students in uh, universities. Now we do it. We train them in Nigeria. There are good and important vocational centers that have been set up in the Niger Delta region. So we don't just train for training. We train for job placement. People are benefiting from such uh, action that we've taken. And that's why we have signed your job instead of the uh, war war. We are going to buy the people in let them see the benefit of this government. Some experts on conflict resolution, however, disagree with Professor Dukubo on the efficacy of the presidential amnesty program introduced in 2009 by the late President Umar Yaradwa to douse tension in the region. Since the Yaradwa administration, that is set up a committee that I headed, we produce what by most accounts was one of the most credible means of dealing with the, the issues of the Niger Delta in a more sustainable manner. Unfortunately, they picked only aspects of that recommendation and ran with it to just show that we have made some success. But in terms of what the whole DDR component was, it has not been implemented in terms with what we made the recommendations. And so you find a situation that there is it's an open-end appeasement mechanism that no one has an end. Where is it going to end? What is the state of even what you call the amnesty? Where are those, all those people who have been, I mean, beneficiaries of the amnesty? Where are they today? How are they integrated into society? What is the impact of what they have, we have done? So each day it is an open-end thing by which money is there. And unfortunately, again, we have not only created a culture that people can earn money without doing any work. That program was just, you know, an interim program designed alongside other, you know, development-oriented programs that have a long lifespan. Uh, this is supposed to be a short-term short program. But if you continue to expand, extend, elongate it, because it has become a patronage agency where young people who have refused to, 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 to work, refuse to work, see that as a means of survival. That is not what is intended to achieve. In the same vein, other Niger Deltans have taken exception to the federal government's claim on infrastructural development in the region. You cannot move from Abia State to Portacourt. Those are the Niger Delta area. The, uh, what they call it, East West Road, up to date. I don't even know the contractor who is there because Setrago is not on the road. I'm seeing a road CC around the uh, Bini or a road working. But the job there is not the kind of job that will impress me that compared to the amount of money that has gone down. The amount of money that has gone down in Niger Delta Development Commission Ministry of Niger Delta, we want to know as Niger Delta people, what are they done with it? Where are the projects? Let us see it. The Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs was established in September 2008 to formulate, execute and coordinate policies to address infrastructural deficit, environmental degradation and other socio-economic challenges plaguing the Niger Delta. While blaming the region's backwardness on lack of foresight on the part of previous administrations, the ministry's current leadership says it has performed creditably well beyond the people's expectations. However, the veracity of such a claim can only be determined by the Niger Deltans themselves. Despite the fanfare, despite the promises, this, despite all the, the concerns, what exactly has changed in two decades? Of democracy, what has changed? Has this sector, is this sector being better managed? Have the concerns of community people vis-a-vis -vis oil pollution, air pollution and all that, have those concerns been addressed? But what we see instead is that the problems have exacerbated, they have become even worse. It's just all about noise, big promises, politics, you know, has even come to make the matter worse. Now people are divided into two parties that, uh, you know, apart from a few uh, difference of a few individuals, they basically represent the same thing when you analyze them vis-a-vis -vis their programs and their attitude to the cause of, uh, the, of the region. 
after raging storm in the Niger Delta, which has defied several interventions by successive governments since Nigeria's return to democratic governance in 1999, is blamed on their ill-conceived policies and strategies in conflict resolution. It is for this reason that the people want the government of President Muhammad Buhari to go back to the drawing board to restore lasting peace and sustainable development in Nigeria's oil-rich region. Inside the Niger Delta, 